Hey everyone, my name is Roman Lewis, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this powered kitchen island bench with mobile removable cabinets. I needed to create a kitchen island that doubles as a dining table because of my small house. So the idea was for the cabinet section to roll away, leaving behind a basic table. But I also wanted power to the island, which normally means running cable through the cabinets. So the goal was to make it look like a permanent island bench with the option of removing the cabinet so it could be used as a six seater dining table. All right, I am so stoked how this project turned out. Let me show you how I made it. Okay, so the first part of the project was to build the cabinets. I was gonna build the table around the final dimension of the cabinets, so that's where I started. This is a well-known flat pack brand here in Australia. They go together pretty easy. This is two draw units with a total width of 1500 millimeters. Once I'd done that, I could move on to the kicker. This is just some simple 90 millimeter wide pine. I could cut some miters onto the corners, find the center of the cabinet, then find the center of the long kicker, and then attach that to the cabinet. Now, the reason I'm putting so many screws along this kicker is not only is it covering um, underneath the cabinets, but it's also acting as a brace for the center point. These are the wheels that I'm gonna be using underneath these cabinets. They are 100 millimeters high. So with my 90 millimeter kicker, that gives me a 10 mil gap. I think that's gonna work pretty well. Once I've got them in position, I'm gonna screw them in place just for testing. I'll bolt them in later. But what I need to find out now is whether these brake mechanisms are gonna work for this entire project. It's all hinging on this brake mechanism. Once the, the, the cabinets move into place and the brake mechanism is engaged, I need to make sure that there's not too much play. So when you're pulling the drawers out and putting them back in, I don't want the whole thing wobbling around. Really, this entire project is hinging on this moment. So let's see how this goes. Yeah. So I've done a bit of testing and it's not quite where I want it to be. There's still too much movement in the wheels when the brakes are on. So I ran downstairs, tried some of the wheels that my tools are on, which th those wheels are a different brand and they don't have that wobble back and forth right around the bearings. So I'm gonna shoot out and get some of those, give those a go, hopefully those will work. The gray wheels, definitely an improvement over these blue wheels. And interestingly enough, the gray wheels are half the price of these, but it's still not enough, there's too much movement in these cabinets. It's just a small amount, but over time, you're gonna to need to keep pushing the cabinets back into place, which is, it's no good. But overnight, I came up with a plan B for this plan B, um, but, but I'm gonna to have to move on to the next step, which is making the table first, and then after that, we can get into how I'm gonna fix this. With this leg, the glue up's gonna be slightly different because before I actually glue these boards together, I'm gonna to need to route out a groove for some electrical conduit to slide through. Before getting started on any of this work, I got in touch with an electrician to find out what I could and couldn't do. Here in Australia, it's illegal to work on your own electrics if you aren't registered and qualified. His advice was that we need to account for the possibility of someone one day deciding they want to put a nail or a screw through this table leg. So with that in mind, he suggested making enough space for some electrical conduit to run through the middle and he would run his wires within that. Woo, this is some beautiful, Mmm, beautiful timber. My bench top has just arrived, it just got delivered. Thank you to the guys up at Studio Double for hooking me up with this. This is gonna be the main bench top and it is European beach. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna need to cut these boards in half and then glue them up and that's gonna be the final size of the bench top. The studio that I got this timber from dressed one edge of these two boards. So after cutting them, I had to dress the middle join and I did that with a block plane and a square. Not only was I trying to get this join as tight as possible so it disappears, but I also needed to make sure it was extremely strong because these boards are heavy, so I was worried when I lift them up, they may just pop open. This was my first time working with Beach, and I'm normally very nervous about using a hand plane, but this stuff just planed beautifully. After that, I was back to the leg assembly to cut them to length 
and then start working on the mortise and tenon joinery. This is the method that I usually use for mortise and tenon joinery. I start by cutting the mortises. I'll get rid of most of the waste at the drill press and then use a router to hog out the rest. The nice thing about using the router is that you can get a very nice flat inside edge. Next I cut the rails and you'll notice that the two long rails are different sizes. The thinner rail is there to allow the cabinets to roll in underneath and this is also the side that you're going to be sitting at at the bench most of the time. Next I could take the trim router and remove the waste for the tenon sneaking up on it. So right around the end of yesterday, I realized I'd actually made a bit of a, a stuffer. And <laughs> let me show you what's happened. The width of these two legs needs to accommodate the cabinets. So they need to fit between these snugly. And when I measured the length of the bench top, which is sitting on, I'd measured with smaller legs in mind. That would give me a certain overhang of the bench top and everything would have been glorious. But because I've made these legs a bit wider, it doesn't work. So I'm gonna fix that now, I won't film it, but from here on out you'll probably notice these legs are gonna be a little skinnier, or well, let's call them a little more elegant. All right, so all the mortise and tenon joinery has been done, it's all been fixed and it fits well. This is the side rail. This is where the power point, this plug, is gonna sit. And the, to get this attached to the rail, I need to drill out a small hole for this part of the plug, the back of the plug, to recess into. So this is where the electrician will fit off. Now that I was happy with the fit of all of the joinery, I could start the glue up process. And you'll notice that I'm using the cabinets in their final position as part of that. I'm not too concerned about getting a perfect 90 degree angle between the long rail and the leg. What I really wanna make sure is that the gap between the leg and the cabinet is consistent and parallel all the way down. So I'm using a six mil spacer between the cabinets and the leg. That's to account for a thin three millimeter panel that I'm gonna stick on the side of the cabinets. I can set up the legs ready to go, then pull the long rail out, add the glue, put it back in, and then cinch it tight with a ratchet strap. The side rails weren't as important, so I did those back down in the workshop. Those simply needed to be as square as possible. One of the benefits of working with pine is that it's very light, but it's also very flexible. So you need to keep that in mind when you're building a table like this, that's gonna take a lot of weight. These corner braces are just going to stiffen the entire structure up, and if someone happens to bump it with their hip, it's not gonna send the whole table racking. Now this is the corner where the electrical box is going to sit. The wire, the cable is going to come out of this corner here and run through into the plug. And after talking to the electrician, he said, all I need to do, I can simply box it out something like that. So that all came together pretty nicely. I'm really happy that I'm able to get a screwdriver in here so I don't need to use one of those 90 degree uh, drill driver bits. That was something that I was shooting for. And the box is gonna be big enough to really be able to work on all that wiring. So I think this is an elegant solution. Then I could do some sanding and rounding over all the edges. I put on a coat of primer and then the final coat was a cabinet paint. So it's supposed to dry a lot harder. And so far, I'm really happy with the results.
Here I'm applying the first coat of water-based polyurethane. And if you've used this stuff before, you can see that I'm doing two things very, very wrong. The first is that I'm rolling across the grain instead of with it. And the second thing is that I'm pouring it out of the tin instead of using a tray with the roller. After this dried, it looked terrible. So I reached out to Instagram to get some advice from people on what I was doing wrong. I'm, I'm no expert on using this water-based polyurethane. And amongst the advice, someone suggested using the flooring version instead of the furniture water-based polyurethane. And what I noticed is that this dries a lot drier. Furniture water-based polyurethane always tends to be a little sticky and tacky. So even after a month, if you put something on it, it will slightly stick as you lift it off. But this dries rock solid, very similar to oil-based polyurethane. This is just based on my experiences. Yours might be different, but if you are having that problem, give this stuff a go. The second coat of water-based polyurethane has finished drying and that tone and consistency is right where I was expecting it to be. So a big thank you to everyone on Instagram who left messages saying, just give that second coat a chance before making any rash decisions. It was a really cool community moment where people just dive in and, and give advice like that. It's, it's really awesome. And speaking of community, I'd like to talk about this video's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with tons of different topics from creating creative writing to graphic design to film and video. They offer classes for real life so you can continue learning without having to put your life on hold. As a dad, I have very little free time these days. So it's great to be able to learn a new skill with their short online classes that fit around a busy schedule. One in particular was a class by Thomas Frank about building habits that last. And it was, it was pretty cool. The step-by-step -step learning process was easy to follow. The content was just what I needed. And there's a whole section dedicated to discussions within the community. So you can do the class, then hear other people's stories all around the topic you're interested in. Skillshare is also super affordable with an annual subscription of less than $10 a month. And the first 500 people to click the link in the description down below will get two free months of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. So make 2020 a year where you learn some new skills or get even better at your existing skills with Skillshare's online learning classes. All right, I'm gonna get back to the third of probably five or six coats of polyurethane. While that was drying, I bought the table legs upstairs and got them lined up with where I want them. This old house of mine is very out of square. It's racked quite badly. So it was about finding a spot where it looked mostly good from most angles. Then I could bring the cabinets in and make sure that everything still worked, everything still lined up and find the final position of the table. I also took this opportunity to cut the legs down a little bit. There was just a bit too much reveal above the cabinets. And then I could work out where I wanted to drill through the floor to screw the legs in from underneath. I'm using some heavy 14 gauge batten screws with a couple of washers. They're 85 millimeters long, so this table isn't going to go anywhere. Okay, hold on. The next day, the electrician was around to feed the wiring up through the floor, through the legs and into the box. You'll notice that he's also actually switched to a flexible conduit instead of the solid one. He just said that it made more sense and you'll see when we go downstairs how it comes out of the bottom of the floor. It just made a lot more sense to use that flexible conduit instead of the solid one. I could then get the top attached using these figure eight clips. What I would do is drive the screw in, pull it back, release the clutch a little bit on the drill and then put them back in. The idea being that you want them to be tight, but you don't want them to be so tight that the table can't move. These are designed to allow the tabletop to expand and contract. So they need to be able to rotate in place and not be fastened down so tight that they can't. Then my neighbor came around to help me bring the tabletop up from downstairs. This thing must weigh in the region of around 40 to 50 kilograms. That is so cool. Now that I'm yeah. seeing it in place. The bench top is in and <laughs> 
I cannot tell you how stoked I am with the, how this turned out. The color works amazing. It's exactly what I wanted and just the solidness is perfect. All right, so there's a couple more things that I've got to do. Draw fronts next, then sort out the mechanism for locking, and then we can call this one done. Next, I'm attaching a top to the cabinets, and this is going to be flush with the cabinet boxes. I'm also attaching it with more screws on the ends because this top is going to come into contact with the inside of the table rail, and it's only going to be touching on those two points on the edge. So you can see now with the cabinets pulled in underneath that thin um, top that I put on these cabinets is butting up against this rail and now when I pull the drawers out the whole cabinet unit isn't going to come out because that is the brake. Then I put together the boxes and attached the fronts. I'm not gonna go into that detail in this video because there's tons of videos about that out there and it's also in the instructions if you go with the flat pack option. This was gonna be the part of the video where I work on that locking mechanism to keep the drawers from sliding back or the cabinets from sliding back when the drawers are closed. But now that I've put it together and I've been doing some tests, it doesn't actually need this. So I'm not gonna worry about putting in these bolts that I had planned because it is going to change the look of the legs and I don't really want to do that. Um, maybe in the future it will become a problem, but for now, the brakes on those wheels are doing the job perfectly. This island is definitely going into the box of my preferred projects. Having never done kitchen cabinetry before, I was so nervous going in and I was waiting for something to go wrong every minute but it never did and it's turned out fantastic so I'm, I'm just so pumped with it as i'm sure you saw throughout the the video this is part of a much bigger renovation i recently knocked through this wall there was a wall right here and it's created an open plan lounge and dining space i'm going to be posting updates of this process as i go so if you enjoyed videos like this or you want to see this this diy renovation process i'd like to encourage you to subscribe so my name is Robin Lewis. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.